but help me. I've been taken by the scourge of addiction to social media. I can't stop. It's invaded my body. Every nerve hijacked. By want? Do I have a notification? Did they see my video? Do they like my photograph? I need to check my, let me just check my tweets. No! I can't shake it. Damn you, Zuckerberg! Jack Dorsey! Welcome back, everybody. Lately, the whole world's been going kind of crazy. If you've been on social media or watched the news or an interview with somebody that lasted more than five minutes, or if you've been watching my fellow YouTubers, you'd get the impression that social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and yes, YouTube, is some kind of plague that has descended on humanity to kill your dreams. Which is weird because it's actually probably the most beneficial thing that humanity could have invented. Hot take? Let's get into it. I want you to imagine a world in which you could not communicate with almost anybody. You see kids, when I was growing up, if I wanted to hang out with my best friend, I had to call his house and ask his mom if he's there at the time I randomly called. If he's not, I would ride my bike around our town to try to find him. That's where we were. 18 years ago. And it's easy to become numb to that fact. But every day you should really just thank your lucky stars that you don't have to call around to local restaurants and ask to speak to Dave. People take that way too much for granted. Now let's unpack what is social media. Social media is constant social exposure to anyone. So what is it really doing? Well, it's freeing us from physical borders. Just because you're in Japan and it's 2 a.m. doesn't mean that I can't interact with you. Doesn't mean that we can't share opinions and ideas. Before, it was like that. If you were in Japan at 2 a.m., the only people who knew your thoughts and opinions and ideas and dreams and creative efforts were your immediate family, unless you were very famous. Now, everybody can know that. So, that brings me to the first point. Social media doesn't create shitty opinions. Shitty opinions already existed. Social media gives those shitty opinions a bullhorn. And at first, that is jarring. 4chan is alarming. Love you, 4chan. JK, don't dox me. And a lot of stuff that you weren't previously exposed to, you're now exposed to. But try to consider that that isn't an affront to your mental health. Try to consider that people were actually just trying to connect the world, connect them up so they can all communicate. This is an unintended side effect of illuminating everybody's shitty opinion. YouTubers, journalists, news correspondents, politicians, major recording stars have come out and publicly stated that social media is some kind of virus that attacks your mental health and turns you into this wretched addict. Can't get enough. And every hit takes you deeper and deeper into psychological decimation. But hey, guy, this is an option. Watch, I wanna show you something. It's gonna be very important to you. There it is. Won't attack me. It's not gonna sprout legs and force my eyeballs open like Clockwork Orange and make me watch Donald Trump's tweets. It's not gonna do that. It's a phone. It is a choice. Now, let's separate that fact from the addiction disease model, which is something, hey, I've got a lot of experience with. Yes, addiction is a disease, but it's not a disease like pancreatic cancer. It's not a disease like AIDS. Because when it comes to mental illness, we know nothing. Right now, there is a project going on called the Human Brain Project. It's a 10 year scientific research project to backwards engineer the human mind as we did the human genome. Actually took us like, I think 25 years to decode the genome and we're actually still working on it because we realized, oh wait, that's not everything. When it comes to say AIDS, we understand that it is a virus. We've studied them under microscopes. They fool cells and they replicate. We know that much. Besides knowing a little bit about dopamine and serotonin, we don't know a whole lot about mental illness and how it works. By labeling addiction and disease, we can treat it. We can make interventions upon it. So when we say that so Social media is an addiction. I don't want you to think that like social media 
is pancreatic cancer. It's not. Social media as an addiction is probably the one we know the least about. We don't know a whole lot about its refractory period. We haven't observed any withdrawal symptoms that are replicable and consistent in the lab. Meaning, if I decide to go from this to this, Chances are the next day, I'm not gonna be shivering or vomiting or itching or breaking out because this isn't heroin. This is a phone, it doesn't go in my body. It acts on the neurochemicals that I naturally have, which means it's incapable of achieving supernatural levels of dopamine or serotonin response. It's not too hard to just say, hey, let's not do this. Let's just put it down, put it down, out of sight, out of mind. So I think that with my usual flawless logic, I've kind of proven that you can't really decry that social media is ruining your mental health. Now let's talk about what social media can do for you. We already know about the dark ages when I had to call Chris LeBlanc's sister and ask if Chris was home. Pink hair, nose rings, very intimidating, very mean, never gave me helpful information. I haven't spoken to Chris in six years, but there he is. I can reach back out to Chris right now. This isn't just for your social life. This has far reaching implications. Which brings me to my third point. And it begins with, hey, guy, I understand you're having a hard time putting down the cell phone. I get it, I get sort of, I, I kind of understand. But maybe there's more important things at stake. Perhaps it's easier for you to put down your cell phone than for the Arab Spring to be achieved without the help of Twitter. So what's more important, right? That we like, ban social media or regulate it for your safety or that the Arab Spring happened. Did you think about that before you were like, social media is the, is the, it's the worst thing, the worst thing to ever happen, why? It's mostly not, hey, look at that pretty human being. Like, follow, thirst, thirst, thirst. It may seem like that because you live in a privileged country, but that's not what it mostly is. When you call for the regulation and study of social media's effects on human mental health in the West, you're basically giving Facebook and Twitter a free pass to remain the dominant social media platforms. Because guess who can afford to go through regulatory processes? those who are already successful. Every time you regulate an industry, you're making it harder to enter that industry. So you're basically fighting competition. Now sometimes this is incredibly necessary because industries participate in what we call fuckery. And yes, we should limit social media giants from participating in fuckery. But we should also foster competition in this industry if we want there to be a healthy incentive for them to not do that. The more you participate in the more people don't like you, the more your competitors have a chance of surpassing you. It's called capitalism, folks. Check it out. It's tight. So all I ask is that we kind of tone down the rhetoric because social media is by and large the best thing that's ever happened to you. And this brings me to my final point. We're heading towards a future where virtual realities will be indistinguishable from what we call base reality, which really may be a virtual reality. We'll figure that out in the future. We're on a roadmap from no virtual reality to perfect virtual reality. This will unlock things you've never imagined. The end of poverty, the end of scarcity, the age of infinite abundance. No more death from hunger, no more death from disease, no more danger, perhaps an end to mortality itself. Now, do we jump from having no virtual reality to that? Uh, uh, no. We go step by step by tiny, infinitesimally small step. That's how we get there. Now, it may seem like social media is its own thing, its own technology that will evolve separately from virtual reality, but that's not the case. Social media is a stepping stone to virtual reality and full general AI. Consider this. This video is being shot on a digital camera right now. In order to achieve digital cameras, we had to codify all the information from film cameras. So we had to begin building technology that would take film and transform it into digital. When we wanted to store physical pictures on computers, it wasn't because we wanted to take physical pictures with computers. It was just so that we could pull them up and they wouldn't degrade over time. But it certainly led to the advent of these digital cameras. 
cameras. It was a stepping stone. And in order to achieve something as ambitious as virtual reality or intelligence that is artificial but on the level of human, you first have to codify all of human intelligence and social interaction. Welcome, welcome to 2019. Full virtual reality, full artificial intelligence on the level of a human being. If we wanna get there, and like, I know you're scared, but I promise you, we do wanna get there so that people don't like starve to death or die in car accidents or from gunshots. And social media is a necessary stepping stone. It is a low resolution version of where we're going. So like, Think about that before you suggest that we go backwards, you idiot. You know, it's not all about you. We don't have to modify the world so that you don't have to like muster the strength to do this. You should have that faculty on your own. We shouldn't have to change the world so that you don't have to, cause you didn't wanna. You've been given a gift. We're getting more affluent worldwide. Worldwide poverty and hunger is down. Diseases are being cured. We're heading towards a future where a lot of the trappings of being a human in 2019 are going to disappear faster than we could have ever imagined. And you're over here like, guys, please slow down. I'm addicted. I can't go on. Which is literally pathetic. Grow up, be a little more responsible. Now, Full disclosure, we teach marketing on social media. A lot of my job and income depends on social media, but make no mistake, marketing doesn't have to occur on social media. It can occur on email, it can occur on direct mail, it can occur through magazine advertising. And if the social media addicts of the world begging for help are successful in dialing back the clock and bringing us back to the dark ages, when if I wanted to share a picture, I had to hand it out, I will market with direct Direct mail because that's how everyone I learned marketing from started out and it's not that hard but as a future technology enthusiast I don't want it to die out I want it to be the foundational block that brings us to tomorrow which is a great tomorrow for you but a way better one than you could ever imagine for the people who are less fortunate than you I'm not trying to virtue signal here like I'm not trying to say I'm better than you that I think about those people more than you I'm just saying that you should think about those people more. We all should, myself included. And stop trying to arrange the world to make you more comfortable and start trying to arrange yourself to exist in the world you find yourself in. You'll be a lot happier. You might even actually believe for one second that you possess the strength, the raw, unmitigated mental fortitude to put it down. I believe in you. I believe you can do it. With that said, I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. This has been a rant. If you liked it, like it. If you want more, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.